Hello, welcome to the Monday, October 30th, 2017 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Berlin, Germany. Oracle released an interesting security bulletin and patch for Oracle's Identity Manager. The Identity Manager is part of Oracle's Fusion middleware. The update hasn't gotten a lot of press being released on Friday, but the vulnerability has a CVSS score of 10, indicating that it can be exploited remotely without authentication and successful exploitation will lead to a complete system compromise. All current supported versions up to 12.2.1.3 are affected. Oracle's last critical patch update was released on October 17th. This issue with a CVE number of 2017-10151 was not addressed in the critical patch update. And Renato came across yet another malicious Google Chrome extension. This particular extension is advertised via spam that claims to contain a WhatsApp message. And it tricks the user into downloading and installing the malware by camouflaging it as a flash update. Of course, flash update, we have seen a lot. One interesting trick employed by this malware is that it intentionally bloats its size to evade antivirus. The download itself, a zip file, is a bit less than 10 megabytes in size, but it uncompresses to 200 megabytes of executable code. Most of the executable is no ops, but due to the size of this binary, some anti-malware products may just not scan it. Only about 3% of the binary, so only about six megabytes, which is actually less than the compressed size, are actual executable code once the no ops are removed. The executable will then, if executed, disable the Windows firewall. It will crash Chrome and then install itself as a Chrome extension. Now, Renato called it a catch-all extension because what it does literally, it catches everything. In the past, we have seen extensions that do target selected online banking sites. In this case, every single post request is first written to a file on disk and then submitted to a web server who is apparently tracking all of this data. And talking about malware, DDA looked at an attachment that a reader submitted to us. In this case, it happened to be an ACE file. ACE files are an older and no longer really widely used compression format. It looks like the bad guys are rediscovering it to obfuscate malicious files. This particular sample was compiled using Visual Basic 6. The sample we received did achieve a very high virus total score, so it doesn't look like the use of old tools and compression mechanisms is very effective in evading antivirus. Maybe it's really just more looking for simple filters that are blocking certain file types. And we haven't written it up yet, but there are some reports that stolen identities are being used to apply for fraudulent disaster recovery assistance with FEMA. It looks like if your address is in one of the areas affected by the recent hurricanes, then your data may be used to file these applications. If you are affected by this particular scam, you will receive a letter from FEMA notifying that you applied for assistance. Please don't discard this letter. Let FEMA know that you didn't apply for assistance and that this was a fraud. Now, of course, some people are pointing to the recent Equifax breach as the source of the information being used here, but there are many more breaches like that that could be the source. To file an application, you need the name, address, date of birth, and social security number of the applicant. All items that are available from various breaches, not just the recent Equifax breach. 
Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.